Welcome to another Melbourne Cocoa Heads presentation, recorded live at the offices of Lookout Mobile on February the 10th, 2011. In this episode, we hear from Jeff Tanang of Apps Perhaps about the sales numbers of Oz TV, their market leading Australian TV guide application for iPhone. So when Sean first asked me to do this presentation, I was like, what am I going to talk about? Like, all of us are technical developers here, and LTV as an app is really you know, quite a straightforward client server application. So then I thought, what is the one thing that's quite mysterious still to us developers? And, uh, and I thought, you know, the App Store. You know, and by that I mean, you know, the sales numbers, update numbers, and how they correlate to the chart. So, so for this presentation, I'll be talking about, you know, uh, the sales numbers of TV and how they, you know, Correlate to the ranks that's currently in the last part category. Um, so there's really just the two of us in the company. Um, Alex Johnston is the UX designer for Oz TV. So everything that you see, everything that you experience, everything that you, the way you interact with the app is all him. So including this little logo here, he's good. And I'm not just saying that because he's sitting there. Alex, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> that's Alex there. Um, but as iPhone users, we all expect our apps to be, you know, pretty sexy, pretty polished, and with transitions everywhere. And that's what Alex does. Um, yeah. So it's pretty crucial to have a good UX designer. Myself, I'm the iOS programmer for the OSTD app, and I also wrote the server application, which is written in Rails. My background is in uh, nine years of Java, so and I've only just picked up Objective C in the past year and a half. So I'm still pretty new to the platform. Both of us work at Census. Uh, and we actually work pretty closely on the yellow pages and white pages iPhone apps. So it was around that time that we sort of thought, you know, we could do something together, and we came up with a TV guide app, which is not just a you know run of the run of the mill TV guide app. Uh, we want to do things a bit differently, present things a bit differently, um, make use of the iPhone features to you know enhance the TV guide um, experience. So as we launched the app. Uh, it will present what we call the flow view. So it's really a cover flow-like implementation, uh, quite similar to the weather app. So, so we'll have a card that represents a channel, and then of course you can swipe sideways to see all the, all the other channels, and also to scroll upwards for shows within the channel. Uh, so it is you know, a different way of presenting a TV guide, and and sort of stands out from the other TV guides out there. So we released this as version 1.0, and we had a lot of feedback about, you know, uh, could we have a great, great view? Could we have a, like a traditional type timetable view, if you like? And which is exactly what we did in version 2.0. We had a great view that was three months later the first, since the first release. And so if you click on this button here, it'll take the same data and present it in the grid view. So technically, it's just a huge UI scroll view with a scroll view representing channels and a scroll view at the top, which synchronizes with the main grid view. So the time bar synchronizes, the channels synchronizes as well. Um, and when you click on one of them, it takes you back to flow view, and that's how we sort of tie things together. You notice that this button here is disabled. This, this is the reminder um, button. So obviously you can't set a reminder for a show that's already started. Um, oh, this is the progress bar, by the way. So it shows you how far into the current show uh, is at the moment. So let me just go to a show in the future, like that Rayman. Click on that, and it'll just set a reminder for five minutes before the show starts. So this is a very, very popular feature. I think users have asked for recurring reminders. So for example, if you want to set a reminder for a TV show, you only have to set it once, and then it reminds you every time it comes up. Um, the next button here, this is the share button. So at the moment, we support sharing by SMS and email. So it just basically brings out a composer so that you can spam your friends about it. And in the future, we might support sharing by Twitter and Facebook. And the next button here, this is the show info button which basically brings up a web view and that brings up information it's probably not a good example but so it basically just searches wikipedia for the show 
So it's a good way for you to for users to find out more about the show. And at the bottom here we have the settings area. So you can remove add channels, even reorder them the way you like it. And you can see what you've scheduled so far as a reminder. And of course you can change the reminder interval, which is up to a day before. Uh, options is where you can change themes, users like themes. <laughs> So feedback, this is usually one of the most valuable features that we have on the, on the app for us because um, first of all, users can send us um, any queries or any issues that they have and, and it's a good way for us to respond to them because before they end up being a negative review on the app store. Um, and also users will be able to send us you know, features they would like on the app. So that's a good way to gather you know, user demand for things. And then this one just brings up um, Twitter feed. And eBroadcast is our partner here for the data. What's your ratio of feedback from that system rather than the feed on the App Store? Um, I think we've, we've been on the App Store for five months, and I think we had received how many? 1,300 emails. So that's a lot of emails to go through, and 300 of those emails are for Gridview. So <laughs> there was a lot of people asking for Gridview, hence we did it. Um, and after we went live with Gridview, a lot of users were happy with it, and they just bombarded with good reviews. So that was good. So, so yeah, the, yes. The notifications, is that just iOS for local notifications, or are you sending it to your server? So that's UI local notifications. So it's all on the client. Yeah. So for us to do push notifications, um, I mean, for recurring reminders, we're going to have to do push notifications, because the server will need to remember the user's preferences. Yeah. Uh, but at the moment we don't, uh, so we might look into that in the future. What about saving it to calendar? Yeah, that's yeah. It's a widely requested feature as well. Yeah, so we might do that. Because if the app gets killed, then the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. gets killed, then the reminds stop, stop working. Yeah. yeah. Experience that's actually you get you get those stuff from you. The calendar stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's like a mail stuff, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's yeah. very yeah. simple. It's so easy. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Well, Four lines. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's just a quick overview of the app. Um, let's go back to the slides. All right. I'll just give you a quick a timeline of, a, of you know, from beginning to end of the Boss TV. And we probably had the idea around December '09, and probably took us around three or four weeks to talk to various TV providers to you know, for data, and before sign, signing in with um, eBroadcast Australia. Um, and then, well, it's probably around the same time that Alex also started his UX concepts and stuff. We started developing in March 2010, so you notice there's a bit of a gap between December and March, and that's because I had the baby, uh, not with Alex, but with my wife. So, yeah, I started around March, and it probably took me about a couple of months to set up the server, so that's setting up the server infrastructure. Um, which is hosted on SliceToast. I'm not sure if anyone knows SliceToast. So uh, they are a good virtual pro, uh, virtual VPS. VPS, yes. <laughs> um, so it took me a couple of, months, couple of months. So and writing the Ruby on Rails application as well, which basically does two things: um, imports data from eBroadcast and then serving up uh, JSON responses to the client app. So it's pretty straightforward. And it took about five to six months doing the app. Um, just be trading bills with UX. Um, so we submitted the app on 15th of August, which is about three weeks late, I think it was. And that's because we wanted to put in the um, iPhone 4 Retina graphics. So I mean, iPhone 4 just came out just then, I mean, at that time. So we just wanted to put in all the high-res graphics in uh, to make it look really, really good. Uh, uh, and the app got approved uh, within eight days. And we released it on 26th of August, which is a Thursday, which we're told is a good day to release. Uh, and I think it's purely because users are starting to browse the App Store a lot more, leading to the weekend. And I think the idea is to try and maximize your, um, the exposure of the app so that you know, your app is somewhere up there on the App Store where people browse, start browsing. I'll just move on to this is what we here to see. This is the sales of Boss TV from August 26th to end of January. Um, on the first day, we actually hit number one in the paid lifestyle. 
So just imagine our excitement here in our next, wow, number one lifestyle, is that like thousands of apps we're talking about? Uh, but guess what, it's only about 161 downloads. <laughs> so it, it just goes to show that it doesn't take much to chart in a category, except for games, of course, so don't, don't go into the games category. <laughs> <laughs> what is your sound price? Uh, 2 points. And about eight days later, we hit our all-time high in sales. And for that, we hit number six on the top hit overall. And that was about 991 downloads. So you can only imagine how, you know, and because it was number one. So you know, we can only imagine this, you know, probably outputs of 2,000 apps for that day. And they're still out there, so it's pretty impressive. Along the way, we got seizured by Apple twice. So once around here, that was for new and noteworthy. And this is what's hot. Uh, they ran for about three to four weeks, uh, which is good exposure you can get it, but it's already after Apple, right? And we released our updates around here. In about you know, weeks apart. And for that, we should get some spikes. And all these spikes are our weekends. So it's quite interesting. So our trend here is actually you know, we're getting a lot more downloads with, with the new grid here. Did you do any publicity when you launched the app? Uh, well, what? Did you do any publicity? Oh, yeah. There's a slide I'll get to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the next slide, this is when we hit. Um, top paid my stock on the first day. So yeah, again, one six one downloads. Not that much for the first day, but you know, it's good enough to be top five star. Next screenshot is when we hit our all time high at number six spot. And that's Angry Birds here. Fruit here. So that's for nine and one downloads. Um, yeah, it's we're quite proud to be in the company of those apps, so it's pretty good. It only lasted for two days, right? <laughs> <laughs> so next slide is, this is our ranking history. So the blue line up there is lifestyle. So as you can see, we're pretty much at the top of lifestyle, except for here. I think one of those sex position accident, or Jamie Oliver, I think one bit us. <laughs> and this is our top overall. I'm going sit right here. And 40s and 50s, off the top 100, back up again, and then sort of stabilizing the 40s and 50s. And also interestingly, in the past three weeks, our downloads have been quite high, and I think that's put down to all the TV shows returning for the new season. So there's a lot of people like looking at TV guides. Um, so yeah, let's do it. This is, this. So this is the marketing that we did for um, on the first day and a few weeks thereafter. So we tweeted on Facebook like hell on the first day and told everyone at work. Uh, so the idea is try and get your app, you know, up there somewhere before the first weekend, sort of thing. And uh, eBrowers also um, served a bunch of banner ads on their website, which definitely gave us a leg up. We also bought um, banner ads on MacTalk, the website. Um, for three months, so but then that wasn't quite effective. I think we got about less than one percent click through, um, and the ads are pretty expensive as well. It's one fifty per month, or something. And we also wrote a press release and sent them out. Then um, we caught the attention of a few app review sites like Smoking Apps, um, Gizmodo Australia. So we got mentioned in a few um, blogs as well. Um, and Alex also did a. Demo on the Mac Talk video podcast, so that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, next slide. This is the updates. So this is the red ones on the updates, and it's super close on the sales that I showed you over there. So as you can see here, huge spike on the first day, and that's about five thousand. Yeah. And it's about twenty percent of our users updated on the first day, so it's pretty impressive. Um, and again, the next spike for version 2.1. Um, what, what we're seeing is that about 70% of our users updated. So this goes to show how engaged uh, you know, the update model is uh, in the App Store. Um, this video like that here is where iTunes Connect went on holidays. This was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, this data of um, iTunes. Or yeah, so we use a product called um, App Figures. You can enter in your, sense, uh, your senses. 
<laughs> your, <laughs> your iTunes account, and then they'll just download the reports for you. Sorry, what's it called? App figures. App figures. App figures. Yep. So I think the service is five dollars per month. So pretty reasonable to get good graphs, good data. Saves you from downloading man manually. And we also use a product called Flurry, uh, which is a reporting pla platform. So all the interactions on the app itself, we send them off to Flurry and they collect them for you. It's a free service, so it's what, what's worth having. Um, yeah, it's just some interesting bits about the app. 60% of my users hit the evening time slot. 88% um, of my users hit the current day's guide. And for flow and grid, it's a split between 50 and 42%. Um, the user spends about a minute and six seconds on the app, average of two sessions per day, and we're also seeing 1.7% of jailbroken devices. Now, I'm not saying that all of these devices use a cracked app, but um, if they were, it would cost us about $1,600 in revenue. So it is an issue, but you know, we can't do anything about it. Uh, this again came from Flurry. So at the beginning, we were around 30%. So user retention is uh, when a user uses the app and comes back again in a week's time, so that's a retained user. So we're seeing about 30% of users returning to the app in a week. And then there was a bit of upward trend, and since the update we're seeing a lot of usage, a lot of active users. So I think we put that down to the grid view, which quite a lot of people like. So again, just to reiterate some tips. Um, release near the weekend on a Thursday. Get your app up there as much as possible, as high as possible on the App Store, uh, leading up to the first weekend. And connect with your customers, though. So use Twitter and Facebook to help you uh, users with issues and respond to queries. Support email, as I said before, is very, very crucial to us because uh, you know, we just respond to them and they are happy and they leave a good review. And Try not to have baby or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, or renovations and the like. So, because all of this work is part time, because both of us have full time jobs. So, I think that's it. Do I go by too quickly? So, this is the last slide. So, um, our Facebook address. That's expected or CD app. So, don't go to this one. <laughs> <laughs> and our Twitter addresses, our email addresses. Yeah, questions? Um, I'll have to check the server for that uh, in the logs. Um, but no, I think Flurry gathers that uh, to a certain extent. But since the, I think we've got the old SDK, the old Flurry SDK, so it's, it's not as accurate as um, the newer one where it takes into account the multitasking side of things. So yeah, I can get the figures for you from Flurry. Uh, as a rel relative number. Jeff, that's already licensing the data from eBroadcast. Um, yep. Yeah, so our agreement with eBroadcast is a revenue sharing model. So we didn't really want to commit to a fixed price model because we didn't know how the app was going to sell, right? Mm -hmm. So so we went for a revenue sharing model with them, and in return, you know, they give us some exposure on their website, and which sort of works out well for, for all of this. So Jeff, just back on your tips page. Yeah. Do you agree that? If you're not going to get featured, it's very, very difficult to actually make an impact on the App Store. Would you agree that it's, you know, you can always make some noise with cliche, uh, sorry, with, with social some, media, you know, some clientele, but to really make an impact, you really need to get the, to get featured? Yes, definitely. And I think, Alex, you can give an example with the Memento app at the moment. Yeah, I mean, as Jeff said, part of our kind of strategy with Plus TV was really to do that big boost at the start, so hopefully we would get featured by Apple, um, and you know that works for you as you saw in the big spike at the start. Um, but then you know also works for other other people as well. Um, so the app of the week at the moment is Memento. They're also in the lifestyle category. They've been struggling for sales. We've noticed they've been out for quite a while, but they've just become app of the week, and now they're coming up on us in the, in the top fifty at the moment. So you can't really understate how important it is to be featured in new and noteworthy by Apple. It is important though to actually just have good search terms. You don't always need to be featured if you're the only person on the store with search terms that someone's looking for. Yeah. So 
I don't know with the TV guide, it's probably something that's going to get affected quite a lot of things. Well, it's interesting you raise that because that's one thing Jeff didn't mention. We went out originally with the name just Oz TV, and for whatever reason, that doesn't really appear in a TV guide search within Apple. So we, when we updated to 2.0, we actually changed it to Oz TV dash TV guide to make sure that we hit both TV because then we have the duplicate of the TV term, and also TV guide and user search. Is that that's in the application name? Yeah, in the yeah. actual application. Yeah, it's, it's got a much higher uh, leverage than any keyword you put in. Mm, exactly. So, yeah, it was really, we, I think that also definitely would have helped because otherwise we're really only findable if you search for our name or browse through the category, category structure. So that was huge, right? Like, so, Momento is currently the app of the week and they got a huge fan, which is definitely creeping up on us at the moment. You guys have actually been number one for quite a while though. I've noticed it's quite a while since a long time ago. It was only that one day when Jamie right. came up and decided to say yeah. number one. So you have to be happy with that result. <laughs> oh, okay. We're, we're, we're uh, really happy, obviously, with the success. And as Jeff said, we weren't really sure what was going to happen. Um, yeah, we kept the count happy, really, with how well it's done. But uh, yeah, don't buy any of those. Let's do it. <laughs> 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 Any other questions for these guys? Do you have like an upgrade strategy? Um, you know how um, Lauren Richter, I think that's his name, got in trouble, got a lot of feedback about selling version 2 and charging for it. Do you guys have any thoughts about when you'll next release a new version and existing users upgrading? And the other thing I want to ask is whether you have a plan as how frequently you upgrade, whether that boosts to boost interest. Well, we definitely, as you can see from the graphs before, with an update, we definitely see a spike. Um, the problem that we have is we don't have enough time because we have full-time jobs. So, um, yeah, definitely with updates, we get a spike, definitely. And um, in terms of charging... Well, it's a question we're going to face pretty soon. Um, we're obviously thinking iPad, um, but to be honest, I mean, in terms of the time Jeff and I probably spent just on Oz TV on iPhone, um, if we were to actually bill for that at our normal rates, the return wouldn't be that great um, in terms of hours invested. I mean, that's not why we're doing it. But if we were to do something like iPad, it's obviously a big call from our existing user base to make that a universal app. And uh, that's just something financially we're not really going to be able to do because we're going to have to invest significant time in building that, that iPad app. So in terms of OzTV, we haven't really thought about whether or not we'd need to charge at some point in the future as we continue to work on it. But uh, definitely for our iPad, we're going to have to release an HD version of our app um, rather than rather than yeah. universal, just purely so we can support ourselves, especially when we've had so many sales already it's hard to imagine that if we we do we release universal the, the universal app, we're really going to be able to fund any kind of ongoing development. Mm -hmm. As of now, yeah. I'm not absolutely clear. At the moment, mm -hmm. the, the title sounds like for Oz TV. Yeah, um, for forty thousand. Yeah, be, yeah, around forty thousand. Any idea to um, move into other markets, like US or? Because obviously, there's only a certain number of people in Australia with iPhones will buy the app. We're looking into the UK market, so we're just exploring some TV providers there and see how we can source the data. Because so obviously, a lot of it's like reusable, it's just the underlying data source that's changed. So, yeah, we're definitely exploring other countries. My app store? Maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure what the demand is for a TV guide on a Desktop yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, with TV tutors, we have the Elgato yeah. program guide anyway, so I noticed you've got the reminders. Um, would you be interested in adding a feature whereby um, you, people could actually record the show from your app? So, um, it's really interesting when we went ahead and did review. Um, there's many reasons why we didn't do it initially, um, but when we went and did it, we, we had to be kind of careful. There's actually an international patent on the presentation of TV guide information in a grid view that allows you to record. So it's mainly meant for um, when it was filed, it was meant for a kind of 
TVs and uh, VCRs and things like that. Um, so we have to be really careful about that patent if we do start to allow recording. So that's why a company or uh, other companies haven't actually gone there. Uh, in the UK, it doesn't really stand up. It's but that's going all the way to the high court. Okay. Great. Well. Many thanks to Jeff and Alex of Apps Perhaps for sharing their insights and market data. We are especially grateful as many companies keep this sort of information a closely guarded secret. Thanks also to Lookout Mobile for hosting this event. You can find Lookout Mobile on the web at lookoutmobile.com. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, visit us on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or follow Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter.